Number 44. The free throw line in basketball is 4.57 meters from the basket, which is 3.05 meters above the floor. A player standing on the free throw line throws the ball with an initial speed of 8.15 meters per second, releasing it at a height of 2.44 meters above the floor. At what angle above the horizontal must the ball be thrown to exactly hit the basket? Okay. And uh, note, most players will use a large initial angle rather than a flat shot because it allows for a larger margin of error. All right, fine. And then it says follow the steps explicit uh, to solving projectile motion problems. So first thing is, I at the end of number, I think it was 42, um, at the end of that video, uh, number 42 from this chapter three, uh, I gave you guys a nice simple formula you can use on this problem. So literally this problem could take you two seconds. All right, so check out the end of that video. Um, but the they want us to follow the long step, so we got to do that. Now, um, let's see what we got. Okay, so they give us some heights, right? They give us some distances, and we want to find this angle. Sounds like we don't have a lot of information, and we really don't. So probably what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to try to connect the distances or the heights in the Y-frame with this um distance in the x-frame, all right, and somehow incorporating my initial velocity with my theta all at once. So why don't we first look at it this way? Let's first start with the initial velocity. Let's break this problem up into its components because that's how we uh, need to go about solving this, all right? So let's first break up this initial velocity into its x initial x component, right? That'll be the vix, and then the uh, vertical displacement here. I'm a little off there with the arrows, but I think you get it. It creates a nice little triangle. That'll be the initial velocity in the Y. So let's look at it first from the X perspective, okay? We're going to be using cosine here. And I mean, you might have, uh, we've, we've done a bunch of examples here. So just remember that uh, the initial velocity in the X frame will be equal to cosine, cosine of theta times the initial velocity value, all right? Um, now, usually this will work, especially if the angle is with respect to the x-axis, but you might change functions, meaning it might be sine instead of cosine, uh, but I'm just gonna try to keep this a little shorter here. So here we have the initial velocity value, which we don't know, multiplied uh, by the cosine of theta. Okay, so, oh, by the way, no, we do know the initial velocity, right? That's 8.15, sorry about that, times the cosine of theta. All right, so this is one equation. Let's do the same thing for the y. So we have the initial velocity in the y direction being equal to uh, the initial velocity that result in velocity multiplied by now the sine of theta. So the initial velocity in the y direction will be equal to 8.15 sine of theta. Okay, cool. So we got these two equations. Now let's talk about some equations in the x direction that involve time and involve the initial velocity. So are there any accelerations in the uh, X frame. No, there are not. It's a free fall problem. Therefore, acceleration is zero. What does that mean in terms of our velocity? Well, the velocity we know will be constant. Let me just erase a little bit there. So the velocity is constant. So whatever the velocity is initially will be it finally in the X frame, and that is the average. Therefore, I can use this formula that the average velocity should be equal to the displacement in the X direction divided by time. So my frame here is this is the initial frame from the point of release, and now this is my final frame. All right, so let me just draw that in. That's the initial frame, and right over here when it reaches the basket, that's the final frame. So the average velocity over the problem is equal to the initial, which is the 8.15 cosine theta. So this is now 8.15 cosine of theta is gonna be equal to my x displacement, which was 4.57. Take a look at the picture, divided by t. What I want to do here is I want to solve this thing for t. Why? Because I know that's how I'm going to be able to connect my two frames together. Time knows no uh, frame, meaning it doesn't know x or y, it's frame less, right? It's component less. So therefore I know I can connect the two via time. So I'm just finishing this up here, cosine of 8.15. All right, so I just solved that for t. Now let's do the same thing uh, with the y. Uh, the only difference here is that in terms of y, uh, we have two displacements here, right? So remember, my initial frame is here, my final frame is here. So what is the height difference between this point and that point? 
Well, you might notice it, right? 3.5 minus 2.44. Remember, it's always the final minus the initial. So let's write that down. So the change in y is always equal to the displacement in the y final minus the displacement in the y initial. So that means my change in y here will be 3.05 minus 2.44. Right? And that'll equal, let's see, 3.05 minus 2.44. I don't even need to calculate, but I want to avoid a silly mistake. So 0.61. So that is the uh, change in y. I know the acceleration in the y is going to be negative 9.81 or 80 meters per second squared because it's a free fall problem. I don't know the time. That's fine. And uh, what else? We know the initial velocity in the y direction, not in terms of an actual number, but we just found it before, right? 8.15 sine of theta. And um, we also don't know the final velocity in the y that we have no idea. So we need a formula that relates the displacement, the acceleration, time, and then the initial velocity value. And it looks like equation number two up here fits the bill. So let's write that down. All right. So what I'm going to do here just to save a little room because it's going to get a little messy. I'm going to erase all of these knowns. All right. Hopefully you wrote them down. If not, just rewind the uh, rewind the video. No big deal. So we have change in y will be equal to the initial velocity in the y direction times time plus one half the acceleration in the y direction times time squared. So the change in y as we found before was 0 0.61. Hopefully I remembered that correctly. And the initial velocity in the y direction is just right above us, right? It's the 8.15 sine of theta. That's then multiplied by time, okay, plus now, well, too many t's, it looks, plus one half times negative 9.80, sorry about that, I think, I think half of Long Island just blew up, um, I don't know what the, wow, that was interesting, um, so <laughs> half times negative 9.80, and eh, we got to persist, right, we got to continue on, okay, so let's just clean this up a little bit. So now we have 0 0.61 is equal to 8.15 sine of theta multiplied by the time value, right? Minus then nine, ooh, minus then 4.90 times the time squared. Okay, now what are we gonna do? I did this so that now I can take this time value and substitute it on in. Why can I do that? Well, because the times are the same right, in the x and the y frame, because I used both the same initial and final positions in both my x and y formulas. So now I can do this substitution. So let's see, 0.61 is equal to 8.15, 8.15 sine of theta, now multiplied by my new time value, not new time value, but just a substituted value, 4.57, all over 8.15 times the cosine times the cosine of 8.15, right? Minus now 4.90 times then 4.57 all over 8.15 times the cosine of 8.15. Oh, did I make a mistake there? Yeah, no. Yeah, I did because it's just cosine of theta. Sorry about that. I just realized... So, sorry, let me just backtrack one step. I'm sure some of you caught that, but sorry, that's what happens when you rush. This is just theta in here. I don't know how I made that silly mistake. Okay, and yeah, let me just erase it in here. Apologize. <clears throat> Everything else is still good though. All right, so that's my theta. And this is squared. Okay, so now let's try to clean it up a little bit. Notice how the 8.15s cancel. And also notice that I have sine theta over cosine theta, and that is the same thing as tangent, okay? Check out my other videos. You'll see I went into a little more depth about that, especially in number, what was it? 42 and I think number 37 of this chapter. So now this is gonna be 4.5757 times the tangent of theta. Now that will be minus now, so we have, let's just uh, distribute the squared sign. So we have 4.9, 4.90 times 4.57 squared all over 8, 8.15 squared times the cosine squared of theta. Okay, 
So now let's clean it up a little more. So we got 0 0.61 is equal to 4.57 times the tangent of theta minus, so let's do the math. We have 4.57 squared divided by 8.15 squared, and then multiply that by 4.9. So we get a value of 1.54. So it's going to be negative 1.54 all over cosine squared theta. Okay, now last bit, and then we're going to be ready to solve. Remember, remember this, cosine squared theta is in the denominator. You have a trig identity that you need to know uh, that uh, basically 1 over cosine squared theta is equal to secant squared theta. Okay, And then the next one is going to be that secant uh, squared theta is equal to tangent squared, oops, tangent squared theta plus 1. So basically this is equal to this. All right, so that's what I'm going to substitute into my equation now. So now follow me over here on the left-hand side. I'm going to rewrite this part, okay? So I got 0 0.61 is equal to 4.57 times the tangent of theta minus 1.54 times now uh, tan squared theta plus 1. Great. Now let's distribute this number, okay, to both terms. So we get 0 0.61 equals 4.57 tangent of theta, uh, then minus 1.54 tan squared of theta, right, minus 1.54, just running out of room. Now what I'm going to do, let's condense the numbers. I'm going to bring all of these terms on over to the left-hand side because I realize that I have a, almost like a quadratic going on over here, so I'm going to bring all these values on over to the left-hand side. Let me write the result down here. So now it's going to be positive 1.54 tan squared theta, right, minus 4.57 tan theta. And then now I combine these two terms, right, so it's positive 1.54 plus 0.61, so 1.54 plus 0.61. I get a value of 2.15. So now we get plus 2.15, and that is equal to zero. So guess what, guys? Here's the quadratic. Here's your A value. This whole thing is your x squared. Here's your b value, and this is your x, and here's your c. So now you can use the formula you need, all right? I'm going to do it in the calculator. So I've got program. My a value is 1.54. My b value is negative 4.57. My c value is 2.15. So I get two answers, okay? So remember that I get an answer It says x comes out to be 2.38, and x is also a 0 0.586, 586. Now remember, those are not the angles. That's what x equals, but what is x? What did I call x? Look at the bottom. x is the same thing, well, no, that's x squared. <laughs> x is the same thing as tan theta. So really what this is, is I really have to write this tan of theta is equal to 2.38. That's one and then tan of theta is equal to 0 0.586. So now I can solve for theta in both cases. I'll call this theta one, and this one theta two. So I solve theta in both cases by taking the inverse tangent of those numbers. So second tan of 2.38, that comes out to be 67.2, 67.2, and then second tangent of 0.586, that works out to be 30.4. So 30.4. So these are the two answers. Okay, these two will work. But now one of them makes more sense than the other, as they explained here. They said most players will use a large initial angle because it reduces or, or gives them a larger margin for error. So the larger angle here is actually going to be the theta that I'm looking for. This is the angle. This is the angle above the horizontal that they must throw the ball so that they can exactly hit this basket, all right? So my theta, my final answer is going to be 67.2 degrees. That is the theta value right in there. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Hope this helped. 
Remember, there's a couple of questions prior, one with an easy formula at the end, number 42, and 37 also goes through a very similar calculation to what we just did. All right, so if you want more practice on a problem like this, please check out those videos. Thank you so much. Please remember to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.